Hey everyone, it is another beautiful Friday. I hope you guys are having the best of weeks. I pray that you guys are going to enjoy your weekend. But before we jump into today's lesson in the third part of our series of being, you know, starting the year out right, let's open up in a word of prayer and then we can jump in. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for a Friday, God. Thank you that we get to dive into another beautiful lesson of God. Only led by you, God, I just pray that you would help me now. You would allow me to speak utterly and fully, God, to your will. And I pray that anyone who's watching this video, God, that they will be touched by you, God, that they would feel your presence now, God. And if they need, God, they will just get the biggest of hugs from you, God. So just lead this time, guide this time, God, and allow us just to have fun with this lesson now. In Jesus' name I pray, and all God's children said, Amen. So today we're going to be talking about the white flag. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen, you know, in war movies, okay, there always, there's, always those, there's always a battle between two different countries or two different cities or whatever it is. And at some point, there's a surrender between one of them. Whether it is after a lot of fighting, whether it is half of them have died and they've decided, okay, you know, we, we see that you guys are winning. All right, no, okay, well, all right, white flag. Like, and, and the white flag is used to either cease fire, which you just said, surrender, and to utterly say, guys, truce, please. We want peace now, all right? It's, it's done. <laughs> and, you know, in those moments, there's also those odd ones that ever, ever happens. I saw, I was watching Hacksaw Ridge, and it happens in the end there, where they're like, we surrender, we surrender. But then, as soon as they get in too close to the other team, or they get into the other team's camp, then they go all nuts and they start attacking them for no reason after they said that they surrendered. It's almost like they halt and halt and little nicks it behind their back and they're like, we surrender, but do we? And uh, I, I decided to, to add that into today's message because it speaks so much into surrendering to God. And today's title of the message is called Being Led by God. And according to God's will. So, to start us off, we're going to be reading from Romans chapter 9, verse 20 to 21. And it reads as follows. But who are you, my friend, to answer God back? See, a clay pot does not ask the man who made it, Why did you make me like this? After all, the man who makes this pot has the right to use the clay as he wishes and to make pots. As the same lump of clay, one for special occasions and other for ordinary use. And in the same way, true what God has done, He wants to show His anger to make His power known. So, in this, in this, in this whole this Bible verse, it's speaking about that God is the great Potter. It also speaks about Jeremiah somewhere around there. It says, you know. God is the great potter. He creates us beautifully. He creates us perfectly. And because God has created, he's created us on earth, He says, please, I want you to be my hands and my feet. I want you to do this for me. In the Bible, it speaks about God's hands and feet are on earth. We are God's hands and feet, and He's calling us to go out and do things for Him. When Jesus was leaving back on the Pentecostal day, he says, you know, go out and make disciples of the world. So the only way we can actually follow God is when we, when we fully and utterly surrender. When we decide that to put ourselves away and follow God's will. See, and, it, and it's, so, it's, such a, it's such an easy thing to say. We say, you know, and it's such a simple thing to say in church. Like, we want to follow God. And we're like, yes, let's do it. Let's follow God. Let's do what He wants to do. And then the first thing comes up and you're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, we'll, we'll go to this place and we'll do this. And then it becomes a little bit more challenging because God's like, yes, my son, my daughter, you just did that. That means that you can do more. That's brilliant. Okay, please go do this for me. And you get there, and you're like, "Whoo, God, like, are you, sh are you sure? 
I mean, he looks fine. I mean, she looks fine. She looks like she's handling it. He looks like he's handling it. Like, I, I, I think they, I think he's quite close to you. I don't, I don't know. I think he's happy. Like, uh. and there's those odd moments where you're like, you walk up and you're just there and you're like, God's like, please go talk to that man about me. And you're like, and it's that come into that moment where you're both walking opposite each other and all of a sudden you're like, okay, I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> and you completely, utterly, and just be like, no, 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 no. And I understand that sometimes people, you know, we all are, some of us are introverts and some of us are extroverts. I understand that sometimes it's, it's really hard to go and talk to someone about God. I understand that some people, that's completely and utterly out of their comfort zone. I have a couple of friends who are like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. See, I was called to do missionary work when I was in matric. Where God literally comes to you and says, Dylan, I want you to please go and do evangelizing. I want you to go on the streets and I want you to go and talk to people on the side of the road about me. Whew, that is a big thing to do. To go out, okay, that means that you have, I didn't have the support of other people. I got to tell people, listen, yeah, I'm going out to go evangelize. And people are like, enjoy, bro, enjoy. And you're like, cool, cool. And you, and you go, and that's just it. It was just you and God and the people. And the first time I remembered was, it was brilliant, okay. This guy named Bruce, and he was, he was on the side of the road. And he's selling, he's selling grass. And it was, it was very awkward in the beginning. But I went there and God was like, Okay, hey, my son, I want you to tell this guy that I want a relationship with him. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. I got this, I got this. I went up to him. I'm like, hey man, how's it going? And he, we had a conversation. And I was like, the, the next couple of words that came out of my mouth were beautiful because utterly it was one of those moments where I looked at him he looked at me and we both didn't know what we were saying I went to him and I said hey man so I was I was wondering you know I felt to be led to be say to say this to you but you know that you know you know God he he likes to have relationships right okay and the guy was like, oh, really? And I was like, yeah, yeah, you know. And he, he, he just, I just felt that he needs to, I need to, you know, just tell you that, you know, relationships are awesome and, you know, God loves them and, you know, yeah. And that was it. That was the conversation that I had with this guy. And Bruce looks at me and he says, okay. And he had such confusion on his face. See, I understand it's hard. I understand. The first time it was so just awkward. And sometimes it is. Sometimes it's one of those moments where you go out there and you're like, uh, um, what do I say? <laughs> and sometimes God sends you to a place, but it's not like Moses and Aaron. It's just Moses going out. And you're like, uh, what do I say? <laughs> And eventually, I, I kept going, you know, I kept forwarding. There was a lot of moments where God was like, please go talk to that guy. And that guy would look, either looked really, really big or, you know, she looked like she was doing fine. And I was like, <laughs> I just said, no, I can't, I can't do it. And I was like, and I literally like psyched myself out. See, God wants us to go and talk to people. But it's not always to talk to people on the side of the road. It's not always to go to hospitals it's not always to do the, go out and just go talk to people. God sometimes wants you to talk to the person that's sitting next to you in a queue. One time I remember in, in, um, when I was applying for my learners, I was sitting in the line and it was, I was with my, one, my best mate, Brandon, and we were playing charades in, in the line because you understand, everyone who's ever gone for their driver's or their learner's license to sit in that line, oh, it is so long. 
So we sat there and we played charades. Eventually, the one guy, we asked the next door to come join us. And he was like, yes, let's do it, let's do it. And he, he actually had fun with us. We, we played, we had a conversation with him, we spoke about him. Eventually, we started speaking about Jesus. And so eventually, we, like, we had our good conversation. He was a Christian. And his family was very religious. So it was like this whole good conversation we had. And that's the kind of relationship that God wants us to have with people. Where we just go and talk to someone just for the sake of getting to know them. Whether you get to know them now and only talk about Jesus a year down the line. Whether you just pray for a person where you say, hey man, can I pray for you? And you just go, dear Jesus, bless this man, amen. There's so much power in just that simple prayer. God doesn't want you to use big and fancy words. And trust me, if you use big and fancy words the first time, like, well done. <laughs> I, I, I didn't do that the first time. But eventually after, keep going, keep persisting, keep pushing, keep alive, going out of my comfort zone. I, did, I just got better at it. But the only way I got better at it is if I studied God's word and I knew what God's word was saying. So that when I go out, I could tell people about how awesome he is and how amazing he is to me. Because a testimony that you give to someone can be the changing factor for them where they get to the point where they're like, wow, if God can do that for you, wow. And they might open up to you and you'll be like, okay, let's, can I pray for you? And if it's simple as God bless this man and bless this woman, that's just as important and just as powerful. See, many of the things that I've come across with helping some people, I've, I've tried to try to bring some people along with me to evangelize. People that believe they have a calling with them. And the one, the one girl that I brought with me, I said, you need to get out of your comfort zone. She was like, that's fine, that's fine. And the next thing I told her, she was like, oh. And I told her, I was like, you need to release control. See, God's will can only, be, can only happen in your life. God, you can only be led by God is when you give up control. See, control is the biggest thing that we have as comfort. And when God says, get out of your comfort zone, it says, release the control. I want to do this through you, but you need to release the control. Because people who hold on to control and try to follow God at the same time, it's like that last part in the wave in the white flag when you're having the, I surrender. Because it's one of those moments of like, I surrender to you, God. And God's like, please go do this. And you're like, ooh. Look at Bill over there. I think he'll be better at it. I mean, who am I? Like, I'm good. I'm good. You've got to release control so God can use you. Because as soon as you release control, you get this understanding that God, Jesus, when he was on earth, he did the same things as you did. Let's name them. Jesus pooped. Guys, Jesus pooped in the toilet. He was just like us. He got hungry. He went to sleep. You understand? Jesus was like us. He wanted to come down to show us that it's not about who we are. It's about whose we are. We are God's children. We are not, we're not someone who's just on the sidelines. We are someone who's in the middle and God will call us all the time. I want to read from a chapter, a Bible verse now, now but I want to explain something. One of the things that can all, will always hold you back in ministry, in, in, in evangelizing, in missionary work, is excuses. Ah, I'm busy. Ah, do we, like, are you sure I'm hearing God's word? Maybe it's my own voice. Maybe it's my own thoughts. Excuses. Because as soon as when you say, God, please lead me, and you hear that voice saying, please go talk to that person about me. 
Or please go talk to that person about God. Why wouldn't you? Don't let the excuses come up. But let's tackle those excuses, okay? So we're going we're gonna to compare ourselves to Jesus, all right? Okay? So Jesus healed people, okay? I know a lot of people who've been healed by other people, just by the, But then you go, no, but Jesus was fully God and fully man at the same time. It's, it's like, but yeah, but when you give your life to God, you got the Holy Spirit living in you. So you've basically got God living in you. So basically you can do what God can do because you've got God living in you. You don't become God, you've just got God living inside of you. And that means that you can do things because God uses you as a vessel now. Okay? That, that like, it's quite straightforward. Then we go, yeah, but, you know, he's Jesus. You know, he's the son of God. You know, there's, there's, that, there's that level of divinity where you're like, eh. And you're like, no. I don't know if you guys have ever studied biology, but DNA that parents pass down to their offspring, to their kids, are usually around 50% of the parents' DNA from both sides. Okay? And whether you are a twin, whether you are a sibling with three, three years, I was about to say 300 years, three years apart from each other, you still got the same DNA, kind of. So I want to open up to Romans chapter 9, sorry, Romans chapter 8, verse 29. And just listen to what this verse says about us and Jesus. 29 reads, those whom God had already chosen, he also set apart, okay? Set apart from normal people, okay? To become like his son, okay? So that the son, so the son of God, Jesus, would be the oldest brother in the large family. That means, okay, if you don't understand what that verse means, that verse means that you become the brother and sister of God. That means you don't you don't receive fifty cell fifty you know DNA and all that kind of stuff from God, but when you say I want to follow God, you begin you go into the, His family like being adopted into a family, and you receive the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is like the DNA that we get from God. Our Father in heaven gave us the Holy Spirit so that we now have this power that Jesus did. We become God's hands and feet. So guys, go. Go and follow God's will because it is so good. No more excuses. I often say to myself, and it's my most prized motto, God's will is never easy, but it is always good. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your will. I pray you lead us, you guide us now, God. And may your will be done in our lives. Lead us and help us to be who you want us to be. In Jesus' name I pray.